G'day team, Mike Oldfellas Travels. This week, um, so this video, it's more about um, dealing with solar in the bush when the weather's not cooperating to, with your panels, but I only prospected for four days this week. I've been in the bush pretty much a week, and I only prospected for four days this week. And um, excuse me, the floors are absolutely horrendous, although the midges have seemed to have gone. They were relentless. Oh, but they seem to have gone and the flies are still a pest. But I'm glad those midges done away with because they were terrible. But anyway, I only prospected for probably four days. I was, I got a bit crook for a day and a half. And um, we had a day where it rained all day. And enough to stop you prospecting. So, I, and I didn't do any good. And I just want to talk about that briefly, you know, is, um, you know, when you're looking to go on ground, now, this ground, and I was, I was fortunate enough to, you know, some live leases, and supposedly good ground. But there's a few things that, um, you know, there's some indicators that I generally look for, and I noticed our first couple of days that I'd, you know, of not getting any gold, not getting any tone at all, that, um, you know, maybe I'll do a bit more research. And I wanted to increase my, my opportunities for finding gold bearing ground. But when I had a look, I see that there's, but there's been no soil tests at all uh, done on these leases. There's no mines on these leases. Um, there's very little near to no drilling on these leases. And... Um, and with that in mind, you know, like I've uh, I found a little bit difficult myself to to find, you know, some gold bearing ground. And I'm not really sure how much gold there is here. I know there is some gold here, but the people I know that have found gold out here, it's mostly been along the edge of the lease, over onto the gold bearing ground, which um, which is you know pending in places, and 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 some of it's been pretty much flogged. Although I have found some gold over there. So this was a kind of a filler for in between 40Es. I mean, I believe we've got a good strong 40E to go on to, uh, but that's not due for another two weeks. But I haven't done any good on the gold. You know, out of that week, like I said, I only prospect four days, but I have been up here, um, you know, it must be a month now, and oh, I'd be lucky to have five grams, which is far from ideal it's not that it's un I wouldn't say it's an unusual situation and it happens sometimes but generally I'd be on a bit more gold than that um, over that period in time so I haven't been very successful and you know you start to talking about prospecting you know you start to question you know your gear is, is my coil working you know is this something wrong with my detector um, what am I doing wrong, you know? You start to question your skills, you start to um, ask yourself, you know, has it just been a fluke in the past or, you know, do I read the ground a little bit, you know? I mean, I found a good share of gold in the past, but, um, and I do remember, I, I do remember a time when I think I went for, oh, I can't remember how long, but I think it was three weeks or something without finding any gold at all, so, Prospecting is prospecting and it happens, but I should be getting on the gold by now. So I'm not sure about these leases. I will keep spending some time here in between 40 E's. So anyway, that's the gold situation. So sorry team. Um, you know, there won't be any uh, chunks of gold sitting in the hand in this video, but I did want to get a video up and I want to have a quick chat about, you know, about these leases. But anyway... I'm waffling on, I'm getting on with it. Um, just thought I'd start off with a tailgate chat. So we talk a little bit about how dismal the um, the gold returns have been. I'm looking forward to when I get back on it. I know I will get back on it. I'm thinking this 40E should be a good bit of ground. You know, it's got a lot going for it. Anyway, guys, this will roll into the video talking about solar. I find it an interesting topic and... Um, it can be a challenge at times, so so have a gecko on that. See what you reckon, and um, 
next week we'll, uh, we'll have some gold in the hand, I'm sure. So it's been absolutely cloudy for the last two days. Struggling to keep power up because I'm on solar only. And it rained pretty much all day today. Oh, we might have got four mil, but you know in the gold fields, 10 mil is enough to start making a bit messy. So I haven't been out today because it was, it was wet and I was concerned about how much rain we'd get. So I come back to camp, there's a few things I had to done, but there's a few things I had to do, but I had to come up with a solution because I know that, you know, running the freezer and that, I'm going to get pretty low on power. I know tomorrow's going to be a sunny day, so once the sun's back, you know, in anger, I'll, get, I'll recover that power, but I had to look at solutions. Now, one issue I had that I didn't realise is I've got my little 25, you know, amp hour um, Blue Eddy unit. But for some reason, it doesn't like to charge from the 12 volt in the car. It keeps dropping off and then starting and then starts to charge and then it drops off again as if it's resetting the current or something. I, I'm not sure whether it's the type of current it's getting for the car. Nothing. I don't have any problems with anything else that I'm running off the car. So what I didn't realise is I got here and I thought, oh, that'll run the that'll run the you know that'll run the freezer or the fridge, you know, overnight if I get stuck without um, and not deplete my battery so much. But what I didn't realise is it hasn't been charging properly. So when I had a look at it, I only had 17%. So I suppose you have to be a little bit creative and that's a little bit what this video is about. You know, it's funny how much we depend on power these days. I mean, I, I was only thinking today, geez, we have such a dependency, you know, on being able to charge things and, you know, run fridges and that these days. And, I mean, I've got um, 320 watt on the roof of the camper and I've got 160 watt, I think it is, on the... On the top of the D-Max. Now, 120 watt amp hour battery, 120 watt amp hour battery, they are the iTech World batteries. I'm thinking that, you know, 120 amp hour is not really enough because two days of cloudy weather, and I mean, we'll look over there, that's an example. I mean, it was quite heavy and it did, you know, it's heavy in that because it rained a bit, but no sun, you know, weather like that for two days, so no sun. So I was lucky to be getting, you know, one amp, one and a half amps at times. I might get two, just on two amps out of the, the camper, but, you know, it doesn't get full sunlight all day. It'll be ramping up now because the sun's broke through and the sky's clearing. So two days without any charge, really. I'm running a freezer on the camper. Uh, I should say I'm running my fridge on the camper, a little 43 litre or something, 40 litre angle and a 60 litre fridge on the back of the D-Max, which is my freezer. So that draws a bit of current when the days are hot to keep cool, but it's never really been an issue until I get, you know, two days, rolling, you know, two days or more without sunlight. So we were getting to that sticky situation by this afternoon. The freezer, I think, 120 amp hour battery in the D-Max is down to, I think it's about 63%. It's quite efficient that, you know, running that as a freezer, but that's the only thing that's running off of that battery apart from the water pump. Um, and I'm, you know, water pump's only running if I'm washing something, or sometimes I shower off that unit. So I'm down to 30% at the moment. I'm, see, I'm generating a bit more power now. 5.5 uh, amps has been drawn, but that's that's for the Blue Eddy because I've got the Blue Eddy charging. I want 100% in that Blue, Blue Eddy. About another hour and a half, they'll be fully charged. This is probably going to be down to 25% by then. So this is running the fridge at the moment. Um, it's not drawing any current at the moment because the, the fridge is shut off. So I've plugged the fridge into this rather than draw off the house battery on the camper. That'll ease... To draw on the house battery because I don't think it'll last the night at 30%. So I'm drawing off of this at 100%. This should give me about eight hours. 
driving that little angle if not more but I see how much it's drawing in the early hours I'm going to move the ute over to the other side of the camper here and use this extension I might lose a little bit of current through that but I shouldn't lose much but I'm going to use that extension out of the battery box on the car because that's still got 63% and I'm going to plug that into here or maybe even directly into the fridge I don't know yet so the solution is you know I have got enough power in the in the vehicle and that's going to be pumping it in pretty quick with that sun for at least an hour now if the sun's broke through I'm very low on power in the camper you know with using the pump and a bit of lighting it does draw a bit it does draw quite a bit more power so I don't think I've done a great job but let me summarize down to 63 percent on the 120 amp hour battery that sits in the D-Max I did have the ability to draw an auxiliary off of that I'm down to what did we say so 29% I'm expect that's going to be about 20% shut off is 15% but 20 should be maybe in the last 9% of that if it's accurate enough I need to watch the voltage as well because sometimes the state of charge isn't um, as accurate as what you hope that should allow the Blue Eddy to be fully charged and the Blue Eddy should run this overnight but in view of that not that I'm so worried there's not much in the fridge at the moment only um, you know some water I've got no beer left in there um, some milk and just a couple of you know Asian sauces so I don't have any concerns about that running through the night I should be able to draw off the auxiliary box and either finish charging or keep a charge going in that blue eddy or run the other fridge straight off of this so we see how we'll go uh, it's a bit of an experiment it's I haven't been this unlucky before to be honest I've always managed well one big difference is is on the D max I haven't got um, charge from the vehicle I'm not charging from the alternator because the D maxes really require to generate a loft you know to do the job well um, they actually need a higher higher output uh, alternator which there is available but it's not money you know I want to be spending at the moment so I haven't so I've chosen not to not to have the auxiliary battery in the D-Max charge off the alternator as yet that will come later you can see we're getting a good bust of the old sun at the moment let's just go and have a look and see how we're going to go because we might um, we might get a bit of a top up let's see yeah well we're pumping in now look 11 nearly 12 amps we're pushing that now so says 14 hours to fully charge the battery but but if nothing else you know we might get up to 33 percent it's going to certainly push it up a bit 6.2 amps going into the uh 5.4 amps going the battery 6.1 amps going into this to charge this 66 percent says an hour and a half still or at 1.4 hours 1.4 hours remaining to fully charged so we might have a solution there might be able to keep that fridge running I'll be able to use the pump if I just need to wash off I should have enough power I mean I don't mind if I run that down 10% but the cut out set at 15% so I need to be mindful of that let's have a look where's my phone what have I done my OD clone oh I've lost my phone there's one. Oh well we can use this one anyway this is my prospecting phone guys I run two phones so I have a look at the Victron let's see what we're doing here I really do like the Victron gear. Oh, we're, we're actually gained two percent. Oh, hang on, need to refresh. Oh, does want to connect? Oh, I'm in airplane mode, you fool. That's why it's saying sixty-five percent. Yeah, I know electronics. So let's have a look. Um, well, that fridge, the freezer must be running at the moment. But it's only drawing 1.6 amps remembering that there's just a single panel in there i'll just go back oh guys well we've picked up two percent on that we were at 63 percent 
so with that bit of good sun probably for last it could be the last hour now we've picked up two percent on here so it's very very efficient that system there all right let's do one last check and um look battery's just about flat let's do one last check and have a look and see how we're going see how we're going to finish up but i have a solution and remember what did i do with it i do have this and i'm going to remove the um i'm going to move the d-max i've got to see i can get around the other side there i'm going to move the d-max around there and if things like they're going to be cutting it a bit fine i'm going to plug this into the fridge i think and into the battery box on the D-Max. Considering the D-Max is it's probably going to be back to about 67% uh, by the time the sun's gone because she's pumping in now. So let's have a look. Oh, flies are bad. Weren't too bad when it was raining earlier on because they're very windy. Well, we're still pushing 7 amps in there. We're maintaining 30%. That's a good thing. We've got... Let's see what have we got. 30%. That's good. 6.7 amps. So we're still pumping a bit in there. Uh, we're 70% here. Hour left. Just a tad over an hour left. So we might be able to maintain 30% there by the time that's 100%. Where's my phone? So I found my phone. Oh, there's the boy, Mr. Barnaby. God, I miss you, darling. My best mate. Saved my life, that little fella. Um, yeah, right. So 65%. The fridge is obviously the freezer is obviously running again. So we must be pushing in about three and a half amps, I would say, because we're drawing um, only drawing one amp. All you can see is that sun's brightening up. All right, battery's about to die. It's uh, probably more conversation than what you, what you wanted to hear from the old fella. But I just thought, nice opportunity, since I couldn't prospect today with the rain, to um, give a bit of an oversight on the situation and, I suppose, the challenges that can come with, you know, camping out bush just running solar and not having a generator or something to back up on those situations. There you go, team. Hopefully... <laughs> I'll give you a tip tomorrow when I'm out prospecting if I made it through the night <laughs> without draining my batteries and the fridge tur turning off. All right. Take it easy, team. That's the old fella signing out. Woo. Yeah, mate.